Um, you know, because it, you're committing future dollars. Because once you start a scholarship program for people who earn a B, so the a whole idea, of course, was that it wasn't financially based. It was merit-based. So if you could earn a B in high school and maintain a B in college, you could get your entire tuition paid for. And if you scored even higher than that, you could probably get your books paid for. That was significant. And again, it was merit-based as opposed to financial needs based. Um, so if you make $100,000 a year and you're a family of four, um, you may not qualify, probably don't qualify for financial aid, but you, you start planning on trying to send a kid to school on that, um, and that, that money gets really tight in a hurry. And so I personally think one of the scourges that we're having in America is the fact that kids are going out and financing their education and they graduate with debt, and it takes them years to pay off that debt. Well, here's an opportunity to earn your way uh, by just getting good grades. Uh, what a great thing to do. And it keeps people in the state of Florida. They go to, the they go to a college in Florida, one of the state universities, which is probably one of the best deals in the country, by the way. Um, and then they get to get their tuition paid and they're likely going to stay here and they're going to be producing and productive in the state of Florida. It's a win-win all the way around to my way of thinking. So, um, but it was a hard sale because we knew once it got passed, of course, it would be very popular and incredibly difficult to change. Um, so it was a hard sale. I had to convince the appropriations chairman, I had to convince the speaker, um, but the fun part was we got it passed in the House. And so then I started paying attention to the Senate. Well, I mean, normally, you know, you're co-sponsor in the Senate. You'd expect them to be carrying the bill for you. Well, so my sponsor in the Senate, and I didn't pick him, but uh, Commissioner Brogan did, was uh, Senator Jack Latvala. Jack was a very colorful uh, person and still is. Uh, big personality. Um, and he's kind of like a take no prisoners kind of guy, didn't mind who he offended. Well, so I get over and I look at the Senate and I'm like, we've got, we're probably six weeks into the session now. And I mean, four weeks into the session. So we're at the end of committee weeks. You, did, you didn't meet in committees the entire session. And so I looked at it and I thought, where's the bill in the Senate? I said, oh my gosh, he's got six committee references. It's in, it's in the education committee with six committee references. There's no way it's going to make it through all those committees to get out in time to get to the floor of the Senate. So I knew it was going to take some special intervention. But then I looked at the rest of Jack's bills, and they all had six committee references. So what I realized was that Jack, and he was, he was at war with the Senate president, so she decided to uh, let him know who boss was, and so she put all his bills with six committee references. So I went to the education, the chairman of the Senate Education Committee, who was Don Sullivan from St. Petersburg. Don was a medical doctor. And I started talking to him. I said, listen, I've got the answer for the lottery. I said, Don, I know. You're probably just like me. You're going out to places and people harass you about the lottery and the flim flam. He says, oh my gosh, Dean, I hear it. I mean, every time, everywhere I go. I mean, because we were all hearing that. And to some extent, they had you know, our constituents did have a beef on it. I understood it. But it wasn't exactly the whole story, and it was hard to tell them the whole story. I just wanted to try to solve the problem, and I thought I had a great answer. So I said, let me tell you about what's going on in Georgia. Let me tell you about what, you know, uh, Commissioner Brogan and I have been working on with, at this time we're calling it the Bright Futures Bill. So, and he listened to it, and I said, you know, but it's, it's Jack's bill, and but it's way down on, got all these committee references, and, and we probably talked for 45 minutes to an hour about it, and he thought, he and you know, we had quite a conversation about it, and he said, you know what, Dean? He said, I like this idea. He said, I think this is something that, that makes sense for all the reasons you've said, and, uh, and he said, I'm going to, I'll make this a committee bill. I'll take Jack's bill and make it a committee bill. That'll get rid of the committee references, all the references we got to have, and we'll get it out and get it, get it done. And so that's exactly what happened. Um, 
and um, it was quite, quite the feat to get it passed in the House, get it passed in the Senate, um, and but then it had to go to the governor, and um, so um, Governor Childs has always been fiscally conservative, and he was also incredibly concerned about committing uh, really a, maybe an unknown, what the future cost of that might be. Uh, and so he was concerned about it, um, and so concerned that he was really threatening to veto it. 